We will begin the fantastic sleep and snuggle sack in just a moment. Hi everyone, it's Mikey and I'm proud to introduce a brand new pattern series by Yarnspirations.com. It's called the Sleep and Snuggle Sack Series. On screen now are other sleep sacks that are available in free pattern and tutorial format. Whimsical and delightful projects that will practically guarantee a warm smile from boys and girls. Super terrific for gift giving and much more. If you're wanting to try another sleep sack, then just click to play and I'll forward you directly to the next one. If you're wanting to do today's project, well, don't wait any further. Let's get started right now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnsbracens.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Let's begin today's tutorial and you're definitely going to need a bigger hook because today we are working on the fantastic sleep and snuggle sack from Yarnsbracens.com. This shark, minus my filming and preparation time, only took me 15 hours to make. The project was like less than two days. It was quite fabulous and you'll be surprised on how fast it will go. On screen now is the anatomy of the shark and we will return back to my workshop chalkboard between each lesson. There are 10 different steps which indicate my lessons and every time we finish one we'll come right back here. We'll get you started on the next. Okay so let's begin to go fishing and let's start hooking up our fantastic shark. Now let's start with the main body and move on to chapter number one. Let's begin the main body of the shark and the main body of the shark is from approximately up here to about here. Okay so this whole upper jaw is later on in the tutorial but we're going to start at the eyes and we're going to work our way back and then eventually it's going to stop and we're going to taper in. Today's tutorial I'm going to go off the beaten track a little bit and I'm going to show you how to avoid the seam line so that you can turn this in any direction and still never see a seam. So that's a, a kind of a, a cool idea today. So what you're going to need today is a tape measure in order to measure 24 inches from when you start to all the way to the tube. You're also going to start and you're going to be using a size L 8 millimeter crochet hook today and this particular body is made with the pale gray for the Bernat blanket yarn. So let's uh, begin and let's pull up your crochet hook and yarn and let's get started. So let's get our pale gray yarn and this is Bernat blanket and your size L 8 millimeter crochet hook today. We're going to start and we're just going to create a slip knot and just place it onto the hook and remember that never counts as one. So for this particular one we have to chain 80. So remember that doesn't count as one so you're just going to yarn over pull through. So one, two, three, four and five and please go all the way to 80 for me and then meet me back here and I'm going to show you how to close this off and, and we're going to do a big tube from this point where the child can slip into. So now I have my chain 80 and what I want to do is just I just want to pull it out and I want to make sure it's not twisting at all and I want to get to the very and I'm just eyeing it out here. I'm making sure that there's no weird twists and if you have one you can pretty well fake it in the end but as long as it's not too severe um, I wouldn't recommend it. Just try your best and try to get all of this so that there is no weird uh, twists or turns. So once I have it out here I'm going to then put this onto the hook and take in the yarn strand that leads to the yarn. I want to pull that yarn through and through and that will complete this off. So the child is going to be inside this ring. It will stretch. This is Bernat Blanket yarn. It's fabulous for that. So let's begin round number one and let me show you the secret after you've done this particular round that will avoid the slip stitch. So let's begin round number one. We're going to chain up two and this is just going to get us started and what we want to do is that we want to come into the next one and we only want to get one loop only and now you're going to see it. It's going to be on the back side Okay, so I want you to slide and once you do the first one it's going to be good. So just wrap the hook and do a half double crochet into the to the back loop only and just half double crochet in just like that. Okay so now that that first half double crochet is in the next one is just right in front of you. So you just got to have be a little bit relaxed with it and just just go with it and just wrap the hook and going in and what you just want to do is half double crochet in. Now for those that are new to crochet or relatively newbies. Um, you just take your time with the chain. It does take a little bit of work in order to work it like so. Okay. So I have a different camera angle than what you're seeing here on camera and so because of that it's a little harder for me. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to half double crochet into each one of the back loops and I'm going to pull it so it's easier for me to see and then I'll meet you back here when I'm across this and then I'll show you how to join it so that you have no slip stitching. 
Okay, so I'm now back and I've just come along my chain. So I'm coming along here and I'm, I've got one more left to do. So what I want to do before I join is that I gotta make sure I follow this top edge up. So just follow it. Okay, just go up and around. Okay, and I see it coming around and I see it coming around and it's on the top here. Now if this was accidentally turned away, like for example say this was like this, then if I fo followed it and it was like this, you would see that it would turn over and it's on the underside. So I wanna make sure that it stays on top so that both are, are being in. So I'm gonna come into my last stitch for putting this together. And it's important that you stick to your 80 going all the way around. Once you get this, now here's the thing, I want you to at this point is that actually I think I got one more stitch to go. So I'm gonna do one more stitch. Sorry about that. And what I wanna do is that I wanna put a stitch marker right in this last one that I just did. So just grabbing a piece of yarn, okay? And every time you get to this point, you're going to move up the stitch marker. Okay, so you're just going to pull it through and leave it sitting in there. So every time you know you're all the way around. So if you wanna follow the instructions and you want to have so that it has the slip stitching, all you just need to do is join it to the top of the beginning of the first half double crochet, chain two, that does not count as a stitch and then start with half double crochet all the way around. But what I'm gonna tell you to do this time is that if you wanna avoid that seam line so that you don't have a line up going through your shark, then all you just have to do is start on the next one right here and just immediately just start as a half double crochet. It's gonna look a little awkward right in the spot the very first time you do it and the and you know what the question is do you want to line up going up through your shark or do you just want it being awkward in one spot? That's your question. So what I want you to do is that I want you to just continue to half double crochet all the way around this thing and then every time you hit the stitch marker, you're going to move the stitch marker up and I'll show you how to do that once. And then you just have to grow this tube shape to be a total of 24 inches from the top of it all the way to the other side uh, when you get it done. So I'm just going to continue here. I better redo that stitch. Too busy yakking here. And I just want to continue to half double crochet all the way around and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm now coming up around again. I'm not counting the rows because I'm going to be using a tape measure. So I'm coming to the stitch marker stitch which is going to be the next one after this one. I'm continuing to half double crochet. Here it is right here and in this one here I wanna move that stitch marker up. So I'm just gonna slip underneath the stitch like so. Grab this stitch marker and just pull it through. So I'm not gonna pull it all the way through. I'm just gonna pull a portion of it and by the time I get all the way to the end you'll see this stitch marker line going in and out. So I want you now to continue to do exactly what you're doing and you're going to measure from 24 inches so let me just get this out of the way. You're gonna measure 24 inches from this point all the way to the other point. So you're just gonna go round and around. If you're doing the slip stitching, you're gonna do the same thing. Let me show you where you are on the shark. So just to reiterate where we've started is right here at the eyes and we're working our way back. So continue to go round and round and when I come back, I'm going to be at the 24 inch mark. I'm gonna have to take probably an, a few hours in order to do that. Remember that this is 80 stitches around which is almost equivalent to an entire afghan going in the back and forth motion. Because this is a three dimensional project, you'll notice that this area will take you a little bit of time but really you are making an afghan for a child. So when you really think about it. So continue to do that. Now I'll see you at this uh, particular area and I continue to half double crochet going all the way around for all the remainder until it gets to be 24 inches wide for a tube a tube like shape. When I last left you we were down here at the bottom and I told you that we had to do a 24 inch panel. So I've done it in the way that I'm going in a continuous circle all the way around. So when I go to flip this over I'm not quite done this. I've just got one partial revolution left because I wanna show you something. So what I realized here right in the very beginning is that I could actually just let that go and just measure out my 24 inches because I don't have any slip stitching marks because I've gone in a continuous circle. So this is where I started and this is where I wanna pay attention to. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm, when I come around this is where I'm gonna stop over here. Okay, so it's gonna be directly just eye it up and just go directly across. Now here's the thing. In the next uh, part of this tutorial we're going to be doing the shaping of the body which is reliant on this area here but there, you need to make sure you have your 20 or sorry your 80 stitches going all the way around. Say you had and I had this and I'll, I'll just be very honest about it. I had actually 81 
stitches here and not 80. So what I just did is that I did a two together uh, up over here in order to bring it. But if you've uh, not counted that and made sure you can do that right here at the end. It's important this comes down back to 80. So for example say you have 78 I would choose an opposite side of each other and put two half double crochets into the same stitch to give you back your 80. And if you have too many if maybe 82 then what I would do is choose two areas and do two together um, stitches in order to do that. So that's what you need to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish up this round. This is a total of 24 and it's going gonna be all the way to the end of the other side and what I'm gonna just do is finish that and then we're gonna move along to the shaping of the body which is then going to start the tapering effect and at this point I've almost used two balls of the Bernat blanket yarn. So now I'm finished with the main body. This is 24 inches long and this is where I started and I just stopped. If you're doing the continuous method just stop here. Do not do anything fancy here because we're gonna pick up that in just a moment as we start the shaping of the body which is the tail area. So or going over to the tail. So what we want this is gonna be the opening. The eyes are gonna be around here somewhere and then the jaws are gonna be coming expanding from this area. Leave in this stitch marker so you know which uh, side that you were working on and we're gonna continue with this. So let's progress into this tutorial. Let's go back to the chalkboard and let's move along to chapter number two, the body shaping. Good stuff. So now that we're finished the main body, we need something more in order for the shark to swim. So let's jump right back in the water and start doing the body shaping for chapter number two. So we're back on the chalkboard now and now it's time for the body shaping just like you see. Now we're gonna go from the dorsal fin area here and this is approximately where we are. I'm really not sure until we start doing measurements of where this fin goes but we're about here and you can see that it starts to taper in. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna start with a progressive taper that is going to start uh, start us off and then it's gonna get smaller and smaller as we get in. The advantage to this part of the tail area it's not gonna be as wide as this so therefore it's gonna get faster and faster as we work our way down to the tail. So it's important at this point that you have 80 stitches going all the way around half double crochets because the progressive decrease is based on that. So if you don't have 80 just make do either add a stitch if you're missing stitches or decrease just before you start this next process in order to keep the tail consistent. You can fake it at this point if you are wrong. So um, what we're going to do is that we're gonna move along to the body shape next. So going back to the pattern we're going to move over here. Shape the body. This is chapter number two and we're gonna do about 30 rounds of this starting here and we're gonna work our way through the instructions and of course I'm gonna be on camera with you to do so uh, for this entire length as we continue to decrease. So we're gonna decrease on our first round going around and then the next five rounds which are two, three, four, five, and six are just half double crochets into each which is simple and then we're gonna decrease again and we're gonna continue to do this so it's a nice progressive tail area instead of being so abrupt a blunt. So instead of just being a like a hot dog bun that just has a tail it's gonna progress just like it would on a shark. Let's continue with the body shaping and let's start off and grab a project and let's show you what to do. So let's begin for those doing the continuous circle method like I am you, you need to do this. So you need to grab another stitch marker not the same one. Leave that other one in that we have at the other one and I want you to put a stitch marker under the last stitch that you were just at. This will indicate where you stopped and start. It's really important now from this point forward that you maintain where this is in order to keep it balanced so that you know when you stop and start around. It gets really difficult on these kind of things to be able to tell um, without really having a backup plan like this. So let's begin. We're going to put our hook back in. For those doing the, um, the regular method of the slip stitch then you're just going to chain up two, half double crochet into the same one and then begin. So what we're going to do for those continuing so regard so for those that are doing the slip stitch method I just assume that I've chained two and I've half double crocheted. So what we're going to do is that we're going to half double crochet into the next eight. Okay so let's continue and count. So we got one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you got your eight in there and now we're gonna do a progressive decrease. So we're gonna go the next two stitches are gonna be together. They're gonna be half double crochet together. You wrap the hook going into the next stitch, pull through, keep everything on the hook, wrap the hook again, going into the next one after that, pull through. You now have five loops on your hook. 
yarn over and pull through all five loops and that's a half to uh, double crochet two together. So these two just became one. So the repeat pattern which I will leave with you for the remainder of this round is that the next eight will be half double crochet. So one, two, uh, two three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then the next two are together. So these two are together. So wrap the hook going into the next, pull through, going into the next one. So wrap going into the next one after that, pull through. You got five loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all five and that's a half double crochet two together. So continue that. So eight in a row and then the next two are together. Eight in a row and do that all the way till you get back to the stitch marker and if you're doing the slip stitching method then just until you get back to the slip stitching and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way back around. If my math is right the final two stitches which happens to be my case because you have your 80 is the two together. Okay, so this, see how we started with half double crochets, eight and then we did two together. So the last two together should be the last two stitches. So if it's working out for you, that's what it should be. So the last two stitches are two together, just like that. And then what you want to do is move up that stitch marker. So just pull this out and that stitch marker like you did before, just move that up so you know where the next beginning is when you come all the way around. So let's move along to rounds two, three, four, five and six next. So now that two are together, if you did the slip stitch then you're just going to do a slip stitch to the next one to join and then you begin the next round of chain two and then half double crochet in the same one. If you're doing continuous around just hold where you are because you're ready for the next round already because you're gonna progress right into it. So let's begin rounds two, three, four, five and six which is five rounds. So let me get you started uh, for the ones that are just uh, doing the slip stitch, chain two, half double crochet into the first one. For those doing in the continuous method like this, it's just one half double crochet into each. Make sure that you do five revolutions of one half double crochet into each. Same thing with the uh, slip stitching people as well. Um, just five rounds. So I'm gonna let you do that here and then I'll meet you back here and we'll start the next progression for a decrease as we move forward. So one half double crochet in each for rounds two, three, four, five and six and I'll see you back here in just a moment after we get that done. Okay I'm now concluding round number six. In round number six there was just half double crochets for round two, three, four, five and six. So I'm gonna stop at the stitch marker. Of course if you're doing the slip stitch method uh, that's called for in the pattern. If you're doing it that way obviously you're gonna stop at that point and we're gonna move on to round number seven together where we're going to do the half double crochet uh, decrease again. Another, another um, form of it. Sorry. So, so I'm now concluding round number six right to the end and I'm going right to the stitch marker. If you're doing the slip stitch method you're obviously gonna finish at that point. For those continuing to do the continuous method just move up your stitch marker so you know exactly where you are. So let's move on to round number seven. In round number seven we're gonna do another decrease. If you look at it really from this point of view you can see that it's starting to taper a little bit. Not too aggressive as far as um, coming way in but it's now starting to take the shape as it makes its way to the tail. Okay for those doing the slip stitching method you're going to uh, chain two, half double crochet into the same one and then follow the instructions from this, from that point and then for you doing the continuous you're going to start along with me. So you're gonna half double crochet in the first one and therefore we're going to continue. So the first one plus the next six. So there's gonna be seven in a row that's gonna be half double crochet. So this one and then we're gonna say the next one is two, next one is three, four, five and six and seven. So there's seven in a row and then the next two are gonna be together. So half double crochet that one. So you're gonna start it, not finish it, wrap the hook, go in for another one in the next one. So you got five loops back on your hook and pull through all five loops and that's a half double crochet two together. So again this continuous round I'm just gonna tell you it's, it's seven half double crochets in a row and the next two are together and continue to do that all the way back around to the beginning again whether it's the stitch marker or whether you're doing the slip stitching method. We'll see you back there in just a moment. 
I'm coming up all the way around on round number seven the final two will be two together if you're keeping your counts accurate and regardless if you're doing the slip stitch method or the continuous round just like you see either way the last two will be that way. So it's a slip stitching you're going to join to the next one and then chain up two and then half double crochet in the next just like are in the same one and then for everybody else doing the continuous uh, make sure you move up that stitch marker before you forget. So round number eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve are going to all be identical again. We're just gonna move back to the half double crochet and this will again cause the taper to go even more. So it's a nice progressive taper. So please do rounds number eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve with one half double crochet into each stitch going all the way around. That's for five rounds and I'll see you there at the end of, of round number twelve. We'll see ya. I've now just finished round number 12 and you can see when I folded them over you can see it's a bit of a difference from where we started and you can see the taper start to come in. So now I've already done my slip stitch or sorry my uh, finishing I moved up my stitch marker. Of course if you're doing the slip stitching method you'll have to move that up as well. So let's then move on to round number 13. Round number 13 we're gonna do another decrease. So this time we're going if you're doing the cha uh, slip stitch method chain two half double crochet into the first one which is your first one. If you're doing it my way just make sure that uh, this first one is going to be six in a row. So that was one and two, three, four, five, and six. So there's six in a row and then the next two are together. Okay, so to put those two together and these are half double crochets don't forget and you're gonna carry on all the way around for round number t uh, 13 the same way. So six in a row and then two together. Six in a row, two together and please do that all the way back to the start. So coming up all the way around on round number 13 the final two are going to be together if you're keeping your counts and this is going to decrease obviously this whole round. So those two are together. If you're doing the slip stitching method just join with the beginning one then you're gonna start up chain two and then half double crochet in the next. So for those continuing in my method you can see that this really did kind of pull it in as you see here and so now what we're going to do for rounds number 14, 15, 16 and 17, 18 so five rounds you're going to do one half double crochet into each. So I'll meet you at the end of round number 18. So remember 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18 is all just one half double crochet into each stitch going all the way around. So I've now just completed round number 18. Again you can see that it's even coming even more. It starts tapering here, it comes down in and continuing. So it's just gonna be laying flat out. So what I have today now is for round number 19 we're gonna decrease even more. So again the, ha the people that are slip stitching do what you need to do and then for everybody that doing my method because I've already explained it several times is just continue along. So the next five half double crochets are gonna be uh, singles are gonna be by themselves a one two, three, four and five. So those five are by themselves and then the next two are together. So that's this whole round for round number 19. So do the next five in a row and then the next two together and continue that all the way around till you get back to the stitch marker or to the start. So I'll see you back there and then we'll begin all the next rounds from that point. Okay coming back around on round number 19 as we're decreasing the final two are together if you're keeping counts accurate and that's not a big surprise to any of you I'm sure because you've been following along so far. So what we're gonna just do is move up the stitch marker for round number 19. It is now done. So now I need you to do rounds number 20, 21, 22, 23 and 24. There's five rounds. Again those people that are slip stitching do your magic and those that are continuing my method it's just one half double crochet into each one for, uh, for the next five rounds which are rounds number 20, 21, 22, 23 and 24. Please meet me and we'll finish up round tw number 24 together and then carry on. We're almost done. There's only 30 rounds of the tail and when I say only I bet you're glad to get be getting this part done. So this is probably the most part of the work that we have involved for this whole uh, shark project. So let's uh, meet back up and after round number 24. So I'm now just finishing up row number 24 ready for row 25 again you see the taper is beautiful. Just loving this. Um, at this point I did take a measuring tape. It's already 43 inches from the bottom here to the top. What you're also gonna notice as we're finishing up we only have five more rows to go. Five. 
and what we're gonna have is a flat edge right at the very end and then we're gonna sew and then the tail is then part of that but not together made from it but attached to that flat part. So what we're going to do then is move up to row number 25 and again if you're doing the slip stitching with uh, you just have to um, chain up one or chain up two and then half double crochet in the same one. For everybody else doing it my way because you don't see any um, slip stitching marks because there is none and what we have here is that this time around it's gonna be half double crochet in the next four. So one, two, three, and four and then two together. Okay so that's the repeat for this whole thing uh, for this particular round. So that's round number 25 and then once we get this round done then the remaining rows all the way to 30 are just one half double crochet into each. So again it's just four in a row so that was one, two, three, and four and the next two are together. Okay so continue the, to do that for row number 25. Okay round 25 is done. Now rounds 26, 27, 28, 29 and 35 rounds and uh, again those doing the slip stitch do your magic. Everybody else um, it's just continuing along and it's just half double crochet into each and please do that for the next five rounds and when we come back this is it. That's the end of the tail and I'm gonna show you how to sew it, what things to look for especially if you've done it in the method that I've shown you. I'm going to show you a tip and then anybody else uh, you can pick up the tips from that as well. So uh, please do the next five rounds 26, 27, 28, 29 and 30 and the main uh, body and the shaping is then complete on your shark. I'm now coming around to the final of finishing around number 30 which is the final. So for those that are doing the continuous method where there is no slip stitching at all then I need you to finish off slightly different from those that are doing the slip stitching and I need you to count back from the uh, four. So count the one that's in there. So one, two, three, four. So I got, I just got two more to go. So I'm just gonna double, half double crochet in the next two and the last four I want you to handle it differently. Okay we need to bring it back and balance because right now if I end like this you're gonna have like a jetting out shape like this. So the next one okay so this is the fourth one in. I want you to single crochet. The next one I want you to single crochet. The next one I want you to choose slip stitch and the next one I want you to slip stitch. This is the final. Okay so what I want you to do then is that we're gonna fasten off this yarn at this point and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you some tips on sewing this shut. So this is what the bottom looks like. It's completely open like this. So we're gonna have to seal it shut but I want to show you what to look for on your shark and before you do so. So let's weave in this ends and we're gonna use a fresh piece of yarn in order to sew this shut and I'll show you some tips in a moment. So let's sew our tail shut and when we looked at the pattern just like so we have it so that the shark is laying down and we have a flat edge that is right here. So the tail is sewn to this flat edge which we're about to create on here. So what's happened is that this is gonna be lining up directly down the center. So for those that did the continuous circle like I did what I want you to do is go back to your very first stitch marker. If you didn't leave it there just look for where you started. You can pretty well tell and I want you to fold it in a way that it looks even going straight down through. So even if I unfold it it's still coming straight down and etc. So you can just keep doing it until you get to the bottom. So no matter where I finish here it doesn't matter. This is where I want to fold it. So what I, what I can do at this point is that I can take out this stitch marker that was in there. That's out and it's still folded right where I need it to. So using the same color yarn use a slip knot on the other side. Okay just like you're starting a crochet project and I just want you to come across and do a whip stitch. So just going straight across and in. Okay like so. So just straight across the two edges pull it through and before you pull it all the way through put the needle through the slip knot and that will lock it into position. Okay so pull it nice and tight. Okay now use this straggler and just trap it. So just advance one more stitch. So just move down and then just going across the road to the same stitch on the other side and just making sure the straggler just stays down on top of the line. And if you do that then it will be permanently in position. And if you don't want to do that then you can just use a darning needle and just slide it in behind the stitches anyway. Okay so we're just gonna move our way down. So advance one another stitch on one side 
another stitch on the other. Okay, and just pull through. So you're gonna whip stitch this completely closed on the bottom. Advance one more stitch. So please do that all the way down. Now that I'm pretty well satisfied this will be the last time you see this. Um, this is gonna be on the inside anyway the straggler so you could leave it on the inside. Of course if you got a child uh, playing with something like this you probably want to make sure that you get rid of any loose ends like so. Okay, so what I want you to do is continue to whip stitch your tail shut and then uh, fasten off. I'll come back at the end of this row. I'll show you how to um, fasten in and get rid of your loose ends at that point as well. So it's a great little lesson as well to do that. So just keep on going and I'll see you at the end of this tail area. So now that I'm all the way across I've got it all whip stitch. Now I'm gonna finish it off. Now you'll notice here do you see if you follow the visual you see that you can see that it was a continuous round because it just suddenly stopped but when you did the sewing it flattens everything off so it looks really quite fabulous. So at the end what you want to do is just tie a knot which I've already done and all I'm just gonna do with the loose ends is that I'm gonna weave it in and out of the project three times. So that was one and this weaving allows it to hide your per, uh, your ends permanently. So it was one going in the other direction but through a different path. You can't go through the exact same path or it'll come out. So there's two and then going in a different path for three. Anytime you do your weaving in it's like this um, your work will never follow because you can't stretch this project three different directions in order for this to come loose. So once you're now satisfied with that you just trim it right down to the project and you'll never see where you started and stopped. So it's a really okay so your shark is starting to really come together now but it really doesn't look like a shark yet. Let's give our shark an upper jaw and let's move on to chapter number three. The next part of this tutorial we're going to move on and we're going to do the jaws of the shark. The top and the bottom jaw are the same. So it doesn't matter at this point the way that we're gonna lay it out. It doesn't matter which one is up or down until you put on the dorsal fin and the eyes and then it determines what's up or down. So what you're gonna notice here is that we're going to do the upper jaw first and then we are just gonna do the gray and then we're gonna turn this over and do the bottom jaw. Now you see the gums and the teeth. You cannot do those yet. You have to make sure both jaws are on because what you're going to notice if you look further on in the pattern is that these gums and teeth are wrapping around the entire circumference of it once the, the mouth is open. So you're not just doing the teeth on one side and then coming back on the on the bottom jaw and doing the teeth. It's all the way around. So just to make sure you watch out for that. Now the, the counts are really important. So let me show you how to get it, how to get set up with this particular particular item. So what I want you to do is that I want you to lay out your item in front of you. It could be on a table. It'd probably be better on a table or a floor and I need you to lay it flat. So you gotta make sure that this tail area stays flat just like you see here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay it out and you're gonna press it in half. Now you had 80 stitches going all the way around. 40 of them are going to be on top and 40 are on the bottom. By folding it in half the way that I'm gonna show you here is that you can get 40 stitches out on top and we're gonna just go back and forth and do the upper jaw and then we're gonna come back and do the lower jaw. So this is an easy way to tell. So we have to mark the outsides first before we can do anything and once you do that that pretty well qualifies for the top and the bottom jaw. So here at the studio I laid it down flat and I just folded it up just for demonstration purposes but if you fold it back all the way down you'll notice that it's completely flat here. So this is the mouth opening. This is where the child will slide into and this is roughly at the at the halfway point. So if I pull up like this you know that stitch marker that we had right in the middle is almost is pretty well in half. It should be pretty close to it and therefore it will stay in balance for you here. So this is pretty good. So what I need to do is that I'm gonna mark an edge and I'm just I haven't even counted anything. I'm just gonna mark it with a stitch marker and I'm gonna mark one of them on the one side and I wanna make sure I count. It's important on the counts for this particular item on this part of, of the tutorial. So I'm gonna count that as one. So I need a total of 40. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So what I'm going to do is I'm going in the 40 mark is that I'm going to put the stitch marker there. So that is the upper jaw area. Okay, so if your counts are right what's going to happen is that this is your 40 mark right here. So the underside starting in the next stitch to the next stitch that's just right directly below is your other 40 that is the lower jaw. So this is the way I want you to look at it. So make sure your seam is underneath. Okay, you're looking at it from the top. You have your side marked and what we're going to do is then we're going to start right here and just start going across and then we're going to come back back and forth in order to create the jaw. So coming back to the photograph I want to show you something here. There is four rows that involve the jaw before you start doing a repeat row. And you're going to notice right especially in here you notice that it just doesn't just start going boom. Okay, it actually comes out a little bit and then it goes in. So the first four rows that we start and it looks like it's just about the eyes it's going to come almost straight out a little bit. It's going to be a little bit tapered and then it's going to really decrease and suck in. Our goal is to have 18 stitches by the time we get to the outside jaw here that's flat. So what we're going to do is that we're going to start off with rows 1, 2, 3 and the fourth is the repeat pattern and you continue doing the fourth until you end up with 18 stitches left over here. That 18 is really important because the fact is is that these stitches have to work together and because they work together it makes the teeth align perfectly. So let's begin and add on our new yarn. Same color, it's the gray, the pale gray. Put it onto your hook and I want you to go into the first stitch marker. Okay, and that will be your first stitch that you're going into. So just slide in, leave your stitch marker there. You don't, it's not bothering anybody at this moment. So just pull through for the slip stitch, chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch as it says in the pattern and I want you to come back into that same stitch and actually do a half double crochet. Okay, so when you're going to count this don't count that chain two as anything when you're counting your 40. You shouldn't have to count anyway you've already done it and marked it with your stitch marker. So I want you to go across. Now this piece that's here the straggler just leave it down on top and bury it underneath. So just make sure it wraps around underneath the stitch and just half double crochet yourself all the way across. So this is the part remember I said that it doesn't just taper right away it goes a little bit straight out. This is that part that's doing that. So just half double crochet yourself across until you get to the next, next stitch marker and then we're going to stop and we're going to turn this and then we're going to start doing some taper work at that point. So let me see you at the end over here. So I'm just making my way across and I'm almost hitting that stitch marker just half double crochet across and I'm going to go right into that last one where it's marked with the stitch marker and then I'm going to turn around. So this is the first row of doing the upper jaw. Remember the bottom jaw is the same thing as what you're seeing here. So now that I'm there I can now safely turn my work. So just turn. It's such a big project that I don't turn the whole thing. I just turn a partial of it. So if you pull it forward you'll see that I don't turn the whole thing because then I got to turn it back anyway. So we're going to begin right here and we're going to start moving our way up and start doing some tape work on row number two. In row number two we're going to chain up one or sorry two that does not count as a half double crochet. You want to come into the very first stitch right underneath and we're going to put this stitch and this stitch together with a half double crochet two together. So wrap that hook going into that same stitch. We already know how to do this. Pull through. Wrap the hook and going into the next stitch. Pull through. You got five loops on the hook. Pull through all five. Okay so this just became the first one just became one. So you're going to then half double crochet all yourself across except for the very final two where you're going to do two together once again to create the, the start of the taper for the upper jaw. So just half double crochet over and I'll meet you at the last two. We'll just review again on tapering and then we'll move on to the next row. So I'm coming up all the way to the end. Remember that there was a chain two there that is not counted as a stitch. So don't think that's an extra chain because it's not. So what we have to do is that we have to look at it here. Okay this stitch and this stitch are together. This chain does not count as anything. So we wrap the hook and these are the final two stitches and we're putting the two together like that. And that completes off row number two. 
Okay, so let's turn our work back. So again, I just kind of flip the project the other way, the way it used to be and then it's not such a hard thing to keep turning this thing over. Let's move along to row number three. Row number three, we're going to chain up two which does not count as a, um, a half double crochet and we're gonna come into the same one right underneath it and we are going to do a half double crochet. For this particular row, we're not doing any tapering at all. So this is giving it a little bit of more oomph to come out from the, the body and so in row number three, we're just half double crocheting ourselves all the way across. Then row number four, which is the next ro ro row, is a continuous repeat pattern of decreasing on both sides in order to, for us to get to our 18 stitches that we need in order to be at the tip of the, of the jaw for the shark. So please just half double crochet in every stitch going all the way across. I'm coming up all the way and the last stitch is the last stitch. Remember the chain two does not count as anything so you don't play with that stitch. Okay, so you just do your half double crochet right into the end. It looks like it protrudes out but it balances out once you put your teeth in. So what, let's uh, turn this work and let's go for row number four which is the final repeat row until we can get 18 stitches along this. So this is the repeat pattern then for the remainder of this until you get your 18. You're gonna chain two which does not count as anything. You're going to put the first two stitches together with the half double crochet two together and then you're gonna half double crochet yourself all the way across until the final two stitches and you're gonna put those two together. You're gonna continue to repeat the ex this exact same row until you end up with 18 stitches re uh, across. Remember that when you put two together that counts as one only. So it's like in this member chain two is nothing. So you got one, two, three, four. So you're gonna continue to do that. I don't know how many rows that's gonna be. Um, so you're gonna have to rely on making sure that when you get closer and closer to this, remember that you started off with 40. So it's gonna take, and you look at the, the, the picture of the shark as well, you'll notice that it juts out for quite some time. So you just gotta take your time and just continue to decrease until you get 18. And then when we're gonna then move then to the bottom job where we're gonna repeat exactly what we've just done here. And then once you do the, the top and the bottom, then you basically get a better idea when you're doing the jaw for the bottom part obviously. So continue to do that and on the last two I want you to do a decrease and I'll just meet you there and just review that and then I'm gonna let you do the rest of the jaw on your own. I'm coming up to the end and remember that the last chain two does not count as anything. So you're just gonna put the last two together and that's it. Okay so then you turn your work again just like we had before and you're gonna continue to go back and forth then using the same principle so you chain up two one and two, that doesn't count as anything. Same stitches below and the next stitch you're gonna put those together. Half double crochet just like so and move it down and then the last two you're gonna put those together. Please do that until you can count 18 stitches only across the bottom of the jaw and you're gonna get smaller and smaller quite quickly actually. So we'll see you back then and we will review and then we'll move on to the next part of the jaw which is the lower part. So now I'm done. I have my 18 here. I'm just gonna weave off this yarn. Just take it off and this is done for the upper jaw. So now we're gonna repeat exactly what you know for the under jaw. I'm going to leave the straggler just weaved in. It's gonna get caught in the gums anyway. So just gonna weave them in and out so I don't need to worry about a darning needle or anything like that with this particular uh, part of the project. So when we come back we are going to take a quick break. Let's and do that and we'll come back and do the lower jaw next. That's the ticket. What a great job. Now let's give the shark a bottom jaw and let's get him to look even further like a shark as we move on to chapter number four. So now we're back and we're ready to do the lower jaw. The lower jaw is exactly the same procedures as we're going to do for the upper jaw and there's no difference of upper and lower as I've already discussed. So right now we have our upper jaw in. I've turned it over. You can see my slip stitching um, that I had done on the other side. So this is considered the bottom for me. And so now because I had you do the highlight, uh, the stitch markers on both sides of this, there is the remainder of the stitches of 40 going all the way across. So what we're going to do is we're gonna pick it up then with the stitch right after the stitch marker. So you can see it's in. So there's the next one right there and what we're gonna do is start there and go all the way to the one just before the stitch marker which is the, the last one that's left anyway. So let's begin and let's restart the jaw and the jaw is exactly like it was on the, on the top but we'll go through it anyway together because I gotta do it anyway. So let's begin this 
lower jaw. So I'm gonna start, I don't like to waste yarn so I am using a smaller piece. I know how to hide in loose yarn, yarn and tails anyway. And then we got another ball. This is uh, gonna be my fourth ball that I'm gonna be working on with this project. So it, you know this is really in an afghan all to itself when you really think about it for that element because it is three dimensional. So you're gonna come to the first one right directly after the stitch marker because that one's already in the upper jaw and we're gonna come in and join just like this. And just join it with the slip stitch. Chain two which doesn't count as anything. Leave that straggler down in position like I'd already shown you. Come into that exact same stitch you just joined to and actually do a physical half double crochet. So now I want you to come all the way across this all the way to the stitch right before the stitch marker on the other side which is the last one that you have available to you anyway. And I want you just to half double crochet into each one of these stitches going all the way across. I'm now coming to the very end of the row and I'm just half double crocheting until I run out of stitches and the, the one in the stitch marker is the very next one after you run out of stitches. So it's easy to kind of see it and this is the last one. So now that we've done that we're going to turn our work and go for row number two. In row number two we're gonna start the taper but if you remember from the upper jaw row three we're just going to be this again and then we're gonna really start the taper. So let's turn our work and go for row number two. And just gotta move these jaws out of the way. <laughs> this is the upper jaw now at this moment. So now we're just going to start off this row and we're gonna do our taper just like we did before. So we're gonna chain up two which counts as nothing and coming into the same stitch right underneath put that one and the next one together for half double crochet together. And then you're just gonna half double crochet yourself across the stitches. The very last two are gonna be together. You're gonna put those half double crochet two together and I'll meet you there in just a moment. Okay in row two as we come out to the end the last two are together. Remember that chain two doesn't count as anything so don't accidentally do anything with that. So we're going to just the next two are together. Half double crochets of course and that's it. So what we're going to do is turn our work and row number three is just strictly half double crochet together to build it coming out of the body a little bit more as we as we learned in the upper jaws. So chain two counts as nothing and then half double crochet into the same one and into each one going all the way down. Then when we come back we're gonna do row number four which is the repeat row until we get to the 18 stitches that we need in order to complete the jaw. So I want you to continue just to uh, do this row and I'll see you at the end and we'll just verify that you know what you're doing and then we'll let you do the rest of the job on your own. So row number three we're coming all the way down to the end and remember that chain two doesn't count as anything so I only have two more stitches left if you can see that and it's just a half double crochet in each. So we're gonna turn our work and we're going to then start the repeat pattern then for the rest of this jaw. So let's turn this in a way that it makes sense. Okay so what we have to do is that it's just like the upper jaw that we did that you see here we have to match exactly what you see. So we're going to chain two which counts as nothing and then into the same one as a half double crochet two together in that one and into the next one. And you're just gonna half double crochet yourself across and then you're going to do half double crochet two together on the very final two stitches. You're going to repeat this row over and over and over until you get a total of 18 stitches that go across just like you did on the upper jaw here. Okay so then eventually th these two should be able to fold over and they should match each other. So what I want you to do for the remainder of this jaw is that at the end put those two together just like I've shown you already in this tutorial. And I want you to just continue to go back and forth in the same row until you get to your 18 stitches. And then when we come back then we'll finish this jaw and then we're gonna move on and we're going to do the gums which is the red part of the shark after that. So I'll see you uh, at the end of this lower jaw. So I've just finished the bottom jaw here. Here is the upper jaw and you can see that they match each other perfectly. So what we're going to do then is that we're going to move on and we're going to move on to the gums in the next part of this tutorial. Okay so we're getting a little bit closer and of course we need to give Fantastic some gum so that we can make some teeth for later. So let's do the gums as we move on to chapter number five. 
In the next part of this tutorial we are going to work on the gums of the shark. That's the red area and the red area goes all the way around the shark. So we had to do both upper and lower jaw at the same time in order to be able to do it. So we're gonna follow it. It's like applying lipstick to the shark really. And we're gonna start and we're gonna go all the way down and around and then back up and around the other side. So it's a very easy um, easy part to do and what we have to just do is make sure that we keep proper counts when we're going to do so because it'll make a difference on the teeth. So let's move along to doing the gums next and grab your race car red. It's the Bernat Blanket Brights. So let's begin to do the gums. So the gums are going to start and they're gonna go all the way around. Okay, so it's gonna follow up around and follow down and then back around. So it's gonna do both sides of the jaw at the same time. We need to start right here. So I want you to go into the top. So just right where the two together and I want you to get your your uh, yarn up and create a slip knot. We're gonna be playing with single crochets. So we're going to attach with a slip stitch just using um, just using that and we're gonna keep this straggler down on top. So we're going to single crochet back into that same space where I just joined it. So then that completes that one and I'm going to go across the jaw. Okay, we're gonna do two rounds of, of gums. Now I've been half double crocheting for this whole project already so I probably will just automatically want to. So I'm gonna continue just to single crochet and then when I get to the other side of the jaw right here then we're gonna change something and then we gotta go down and then back up in the other round. So let me get over to here next. So now I'm coming around the side and I'm at the top corner here and in the top corner I need you to put in three single crochets there. Now we didn't do that on the other side because we are just starting this revolution so we'll be completing that this extra stitches when we get back there. Now what I need you to do is that I need you to fit 24 single crochets into this space here, 24 here and then coming back on the top. So this may take you a few tries in order to do it but you really do need that count of 24. So just going into the side, do not never go into a gapping space, go right into a chain itself Okay, and this is two, I'm just guessing. And then I'm going into a chain three and then another chain four and continue to do that all the way down. So, so continue to do that all the way down. It's probably gonna take me a couple tries in order to get my stitch counts right in order to get 24 into this particular space. I'm just gonna show you a cheating technique that I'm doing for myself. So I'm looking at it, halfway point is about here. So I'm just gonna put a stitch marker in there for myself to know that I need, in order to get 24 single crochets in here, I need to have 12 done by this point. If I don't have 12 done by this point, I'm not gonna be able to get a 12 in by here or another 12 to get 24. So what I want to do is that I backtracked when I was just uh, talking to you and now I'm gonna try to squish in 12 here and then 12 before I get to the edge right here. So that's just kind of what I'm doing. So here we go. So voila, I got my 12 in there. So I made sure I had 12 by the time I hit this spot and then I got 12 in by the time I hit to here. So I'm not gonna fasten off and what I'm gonna do is just flip her over, <laughs> assuming it's a her. And I'm going to take out the stitch marker and I'm again gonna do the same thing because it works for me. So I'm just gonna look at where the halfway mark is. It just, it's, it's just a visual cue for myself. It just helps me. That's what uh, stitch markers are really for to helping you. So I'm just gonna put that in there and all I'm just gonna do is start again and I need to squeeze in another 24 single crochets from here all the way to the corner. Remember the corner will have three single crochets in there again. So continue to do that on the bottom jaw. Okay, I've now squeezed in my nether 24 here. I can take out my stitch marker, I'm good to go. Now I'm gonna have to do the same for the other two sides over here. So I'm gonna leave that for you, the same concept. So now that I'm at the top here, the next uh, top one here is gonna have three single crochets in there. So one, two, three, and then I'm just gonna follow this across each stitch getting one single crochet and then on the edge of this as we, we hit back to the sides of the mouth is that there's three single crochets in here, 24 down, 24 back and then we are going to place two more single crochets right into the starting in order to complete this round. So please continue to do that and I'll see you at the end. Do not fasten off, we're not done using red. We're gonna go one more time with red. 
So as you get all the way back around I just got my 24 in here. This is where we started and we need to put two more single crochets right into the same one that we started with and then we're going to slip stitch it to the top of the first single crochet to finalize. Do not fasten off. We are going to continue this yarn uh, one more time going all the way around. So continuing along then we're gonna chain up one and right now we are in, we are the one over from the middle. So every time you hit like there's chain three spaces or sorry there's sing three single crochets in a corner. The middle one is always gonna get three single crochets. Everything else is gonna get single crochets. So we're not in the middle one. We're one over. So therefore we're just gonna start off with a single crochet and just single crochet all the way around like so. And then we just have to look for the edges on the upper jaws right here. Just look at it. So here, here, here and over here. All the rest of it is just one single crochet and this will stabilize the gums and then we're going to then move on to the teeth after that. So make sure you just look for those three single crochets on a corner and just apply uh, three more single crochets into the middle one of those three. And I will meet you at the end of this revolution. So I'm coming up all the way around by finalizing off the gums. It's two rounds only and then we're gonna move on to the ferocious teeth. So if you, if you want the PG version of the shark we just call them gummy. Just don't put any teeth at this point. Just keep it red. <laughs> it's up to you on what you prefer. You know creativity is a lot of fun. You can exercise your own ideas as you go. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna get right back to the very beginning to the one we started with. Okay so there's, remember there was three there. We started off on the one on the side. So the last one is the one right in the middle. So that one's gonna have three single crochets in that one. So one, two and three. And what I need you to do is that we're going to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet and we're gonna fasten off this yarn. So it says to join the yarn with the white at this point but I like nice clean starts and stops. So I'm just going to fasten this off. Weave in my ends and then we're going to begin the teeth next in the next part of the chapter of this video. So let's uh, go there and let's start the teeth next. Okay so we cannot really call this shark gummy yet we have to give him some teeth. So let's give him the classic look of the shark and let's move on to chapter number six in doing his teeth. The next part of this tutorial we are going to work on the teeth and the teeth are wrapped around like the gums and we're gonna start on one side and it's gonna wrap around the other and come around. These teeth are built differently than what you may expect and we'll be covering that within today's tutorial. So let's cover on what to do with the teeth. So I'd like to point out something that's unusual on these teeth. You're going to notice that white dots on the photograph. Those are indicators to me as a crocheter that something is unusual happening here. And these teeth are not being built like going like single crochet, half double crochet and then and being built like teeth going out. They're actually being built on their side. So what we're looking at here is that we're going to start off and we're gonna chain five. We're then going to single crochet, second chain from the hook, half double into the next, double into the next and treble into the next and we're going to skip three stitches, one, two and three and slip stitch into the next one. And then we do that again, chain five and work our way down. So what you're looking at with these teeth here is that they're being built up on their side. So if you look at it from this point of view like this, that's how they're being built. Okay. So what we're going to be doing today is that when you see these white things, these are actually the slip stitching marks of the stitches lying down on their sides. So we're going to begin at the top corner and then work our way around and we're going to come all the way to the end doing the same thing. So let me show you how to do the teeth. It's only one round of using the white. So let's begin doing the teeth. So the middle one, okay, where you did the single crochet is going to be the one that we start on with. So before it asks you to change the colors right at that spot. So I had to uh, fasten off cleanly and I'm just going to create I'm just gonna leave an extra long string this time. I'm probably gonna have to weave that in with the darning needle in order to effectively hide it. So I've got a slip knot on and I'm gonna put it on like so and let's join this with the slip knot. So, so let's let the straggler fall out of, way, out of the way in front of me and just join it using the yarn going to the yarn ball. So now we're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. Coming second chain from the hook single crochet. The next one is 
next chain down is going to be half double crochet. So you know how to do that. You've been doing that the whole thing. Then double crochet is in the next chain and then finally we're gonna treble. So wrap that hook twice for the final chain and there's a tooth right there. Okay, not cool? So you're gonna come back down to the line and just skip over three stitches. So one, two, three, slip stitch into the fourth. So just pull through and through. Okay, so there is your tooth. It's now lying down right where it should and because you're crocheting on this side, the tooth is gonna go, wanna go on the inside. So <laughs> instead of having a, um, a, a shark with the teeth actually facing outward, they're actually gonna face down and into the project. Um, so that, you know, it gives the illusion that somebody's being eaten or, or swallowed. So we're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then second chain from the hook, single crochet. Next chain is double, or sorry, half double. And the next one is a double. Sometimes my mouth and my hooks don't do the same thing. And then the next one is a treble. So wrap that hook twice and going into the final chain that's available to you as you work your way down. Then coming back down here, you skip again. So one, two, three, go to the fourth, slip stitch. Okay, so there is another tooth just like that. So what I want you to do is go all the way around and just uh, continue to all the way around the gums and fill it in with teeth and that's what you're gonna do for this round. So I'm coming up all the way around. I have one extra stitch left over that if I go over and I only go three, I got one left over. If that happens to you, that's not a deal breaker to me. Have you ever seen a shark with perfect teeth? <laughs> not a real one, that's for sure. So one, two, three, four, five. So what I want to do is that I'm just going to flub it in the sense that I'm just going to, why would you frog out all the teeth just because you're off by one? Nobody in their right mind is gonna do that. <laughs> Um, and you know what, once you get with this project, you're, you're not gonna worry about it either. You know, a child isn't really necessarily gonna sit there and count the stitches. And if they do, they got nothing else better to do. <laughs> so here we go. And so I should have only skipped over three. So one, two, and three. So I'm just going to then just join it to the beginning one there. So just reach right over and do it like there. So what I want to do at this point is that I want to trim that off but what I want to pay attention to is that there's really nothing for me to secure that in without using a darning needle. So I know that from an experienced crocheter because I could see that you know you're only attached in a few spaces here. So what I would recommend then is using a darning needle is to hide in the loose ends. So I've shown you how to do that before um, when we've done that before. So um, what I want to do is just throw this yarn onto a darning needle. Pull it through. This is a little needle. It's pretty sharp though. So what I want to just do is glide it back and forth underneath the stitches inside a post. Okay, so one. So go in and out three times. So one, going in a different space but in the other direction for two. And finally going back in a different space but in the other direction for three. So now you can officially, officially cut that off right there. And do the same with the other stitch, um, other one that I had started with and th that would be good to go. So this would be completing the teeth and now the teeth are really starting to make this thing look real and uh, the teeth are so incredibly soft because it's Bernat blanket yarn. But you know I had this idea that when I saw the teeth in the photo that these would be hard but I don't even know what I was thinking. So let's move on to the next part of this tutorial. Let's do that next. Perfect. Now you have a cocoon with teeth. Now let's move on and give him some eyes and let's do the outer eye first for chapter number seven. So let's move along in today's tutorial we're going to do the outer eye which is white here. For tutorial reasons I'm going to leave the shark in behind the scenes because you'll never see the white and we need to make two of these and these are the uh, white of the eyes of the shark. Let's show you how to make those next and make sure that when you're done this you leave an extra long strand attached because you're gonna use that to sew it down to your shark. What I recommend when we get this far is that we're gonna do the other eye which is I'm gonna be positioned. You're gonna sew this eye to this eye and then this eye to the project. So let's begin to do the outer eye next. So let's begin. We are going to start off with our vintage white that we have and we are going to start off with a slip knot and we're going to chain four. So we're going to do that. So one, 
two, three, and four. So we're gonna go once around this whole thing to make a circle and we're just gonna come to the very first chain that you see here and we're going to apply five, sorry, we're gonna apply 11 double crochets into the first chain and this will cause it to circle around the middle. Okay, so that was one and two. Leave that straggler down in position so you can go right up over top of it. This was uh, three, four, this is five, six, this is seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Now remember we had that kind of chain thing right in the middle so it's gonna give you a total of twelve of these posts. So let's count those together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So we're just gonna slip stitch to the top of the very first chain there and that that'll conclude this one. So we've gotta do one more round of this and then the white of the eyes are done and make sure you make two of these. So let's begin the next round. To begin the next round you just gotta chain one and then into each stitch around you're gonna apply two single crochets into each one. So that'll give you a total count of twenty-four. So just keep moving around and apply two single crochets into every one. And when you're done this I want you to leave an extra long yarn tail and you're gonna use that yarn tail to sew it directly onto your project at a later time. So you're gonna do this and put it aside the designer has written this pattern in the sense that we're working from the front of the body and working to the tail as your final. So we're working our way back and that's why the eyes are next. So continue to do two single crochets in each stitch going all the way around. So then coming up to the final that we have two into each. You know even if you put an, if you, even if you screwed up and put another one in there like you shouldn't have it's not really gonna matter because it's such a fluffy yarn. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the top of the beginning single crochet that you started with and that's it. So you're gonna have two of these. So leave an extra long string. This will be your sewing in string. Just like so and I want you to pull that loop through like this and leave that. So what you're gonna have is that you're gonna do two of these and then you have, will have two eyes to work with and these are the whites of the eyes. So let's move along in this tutorial. The next chapter is the inner eye. So let's move him on and give him a little bit more personality and let's give him some pupils for his eyes as we move on to chapter number eight. So let's begin our next chapter. We are moving along to the inner eye. This is the black area here. It's, it's called coal and it's just a smaller version of the other eye. So it's a little bit of a different uh, stitch technique but where you place these on top of the, the whites of the eyes is uh, basically up to you and how you want the character to look. So let's make two of these uh, eyes which are the black section of the eyes. Let's move along. So let's begin and we're gonna create a slip knot and this is just one round all only and what I need you to do is that you're gonna start off with your slip knot and you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. Now what I want you to do is that I want you to do twelve half double crochets in the first chain right where I'm wiggling right there and I want you to put twelve half double crochets all the way around. So one, we're not gonna worry about that other chain area. Two, three, And this is four. And this is five. Let me just release more yarn. That was five. And we got six. This is seven. It's eight. Nine. Ten. And just make room if you don't have enough room. Eleven and twelve. So we have a, a little bit of an issue here that you'll see. If I pull this out of the way you're gonna see a hole right through it. We cannot have that. So I want you to slip stitch to the very beginning on where you started to finalize that circle and leave it. 
So now that we have this we are not quite done. We have a hole right in the center of the eye. We do not want that. So what we're gonna do is before we apply this to the white area of the eye I want you just to strategically with this leftover strand I want you just to come into the project. So turn it over to the back side and I want you just to feed it through and I want you just to go back to the center and across the center to the other side. Right there. And what this will do is that and you don't need to pull on it too tight because you don't wanna distort the eye but what's gonna happen is that you're gonna come back across. So just whip stitch back across and then back over to another side on a diagonal. And what, what you're doing here is that you're just closing off that center eye. It's just like the final touches so you should not be able to see through this eye. So now what I want you to do is just feed this yarn back to the outside edge of where you were and now you don't have to apply any other strands. Just use this strand and then at a later time you're gonna use the same strand. You are going to sew it to the white and then once you have that done you're then gonna sew this white to the project and then when you do that we'll have to meet back up and this is one of those things you look at the photograph and you match it. The straggler because uh, you buried it as you went you can just uh, simply just trim that out and please make two of these and then we're gonna move along to the next part of this project. Okay, so now it's getting exciting. We're gonna give him the most iconic shape of a shark and that's the fin. He's really coming together now and let's move on to chapter number nine. In the next part of this tutorial we're going to work on the fin of the shark and the fin is actually really easy to make and it's like a triangle but it's only growing on one side to give you that perfect edge shape that you need. So we're coming back to our diagram. So the flat edge is on the front side and then this tapers out to the back. So this is the front side of the of the shark. This is going toward the tail so it will taper back. So this fin is not yet done. I still have to trace it with a single crochet going up and then back down and then just fasten off here. So, so when we go to crochet this we're gonna turn this upside down. We're gonna start right at the top of the fin and work our way back. So this row here we're always just one single crochet on here but every time we hit this side we're gonna put two single crochets on the edge. And so there's a repeat pattern. There's a total of 22 of these rows that will get you right to the top. If you make it a little bit bigger or shorter you know it's no big deal. Um, it's basically if you can do 22 that's what the pattern's asking for. So every time you get to this side of the pattern you're going to add two single crochets into the very final stitch and you're gonna start up and put two single crochets and then one single crochet all the way to the edge. Then chain up one, one single crochet out back and then when you get back to the edge you're gonna put two in there. So every time it's on this side you're gonna apply two single crochets into that and it will give you this sweeping uh, look like this and it will keep this relatively flat just like this. So let's start our fin. We're gonna create a slip knot and we are going to chain two. Okay, so remember the first one on the hook never counts as one. So we have one and two and let's begin row number one. It says two single crochets, second chain from the hook. Well second is the only one that's left. So you're just gonna apply two single crochets into that first one. So one and two and that's row number one. So let's begin and just keep it nice and simple. Just pull everything nice and tight. Let's turn our work and go for row number two. It says to chain one and one single crochet into the first single crochet just like there and in the next one which is the only one left is gonna be two single crochets into that one. So one and two just like that. Let's turn our work and do number three. So number three and four are gonna be the repeat patterns all throughout. So number three the it's a start. So it's gonna be two in the in the beginning. So chain up one and there's going to be two single crochets into the very start one and then one single crochet into the, all the remaining which is only two in there. Okay, so we turn our work and go for number four. So number four is gonna be the ending. So we chain up one and one single crochet into each except for the very final one where we're going to have two. So the la next one is the last one. So one and two just like that. So let's turn our work and go for next. So it says to repeat rows three and four a total of nine times. So this is row number five and I'm just gonna repeat a couple times for you. So number five is in the start. So chain up one and it's two single crochets right in the beginning and then, then all the rest are just one single crochet each. Does that make sense? You got it? So this is number five. 
Let's turn our work, go for number six. Okay, so number six is a repeat of number four which means that the is the expansion is on the other side. So we just chain up one, one single crochet into each except for the very final one where we'll put two into that final. So you can see that the shark's fin is starting to take shape. One side is gonna be flat, the other side is gonna have the, the traditional look of a shark's fin. So you're gonna put two single crochets right into the end. Let's just do a couple more repeats. So that was one out of nine times that we repeated the pattern. So let's do it two out of nine times. So chain up one and your this is going to repeat number three. So it's two single crochets into the first and then one single crochet into all the rest. Just like that. Okay. And then turning our work. So this is a repeat. So this is going to be uh, row number seven. So it's gonna be at the end. Okay, so this is uh, chain up one, one single crochet in the first and then you just do that all the way to the other side. And the last one will have two single crochets into the last one. So you can see the triangles starting to take shape. I want you to continue to repeat this over and over and over and you saw my repeating instructions and you also can see it in the pattern. There's a total of 22 rows altogether by the time you get to the end. So that was, we repeated it exactly twice. So one and two, one and two. So now I need you to repeat in order uh, seven more times that same thing and then we're gonna meet back at the bottom and then we're gonna do a whole rotation around in order to create a really nice look. So let's uh, continue to do that and I'll see you back at, at the end of row number 22. So I'm now ready to trace my fin with a single crochet. So I don't need to go across the bottom. I only need to go up and then back down. Top one we're gonna put five single crochets in here. Because this is single crochet line every line will get one single crochet as you progress forward. So you can just start up and you're just gonna go right into the first stitch and you're just gonna apply just like to the side of it. Just apply down a row just one single crochet. There's no exact science to it. If you look at it it's gonna stay into the same spot each time. Use your fingertips to feel where it is like that's kind of I squish it and I can feel the hole. Okay so just work your way up uh, one side and down the other. This will give a beautiful look and finalization. Now for those that would prefer their fin to stand up you could do two of these and then put some polyfill in the middle uh, like some stuffing and then just sew it strategically onto your shark so that you can have your fin stand completely up if you prefer that. Um, you know this is a snuggle sack. You know do you want that if the child's actually sleeping? I don't know. Um, it might be something that's kind of uncomfortable especially if the child's still sleeping and wants to roll over in the sleeping stack. It will prevent that and it will be kind of uncomfortable. So you have to make a call based on your own creativity and what you prefer. Maybe you have to ask your kids what do they prefer? Something more solid or something more that will bend out of the way. The top of the one we're going to put five single crochets in. Now I'm running into a straggler. I'm gonna go right up over top of it so that it buries it underneath so I don't have to worry about it. So that was your five and now let's work down the other side. So I'm gonna leave that straggler down on top of the line and bury that as I go. We're gonna do the same of tracing the tail and it does provide that really nice look. So I've got that in enough. I can just safely cut that out and just continue to single crochet down the other side. So you don't need to redo the bottom because you were already there and it will look completely finished at that point. So just continue to do that. Might as well take you there. I'm almost done. The fins and the tails do not take too long. Now you'll notice that the shark does not have any side fins. You could uh, do two more of these if you wanted to and apply it to the shark if you wanted to. That's completely your business. It's your creativity. There is no fins applied for this as well. So we're coming up down to the end and I'm gonna go right to the bottom. Now I wanna leave an extra long tail. So uh, like tail for yarn, <laughs> tail and shark. So I wanna come into the top one here, just pull it through with a slip stitch. Leave this extra long so you can use this strand to um, sew it right directly onto your project. So just with this, just apply it, pull it through. Okay, so it kinda locks it into position and use that strand then to sew. Now I buried this in enough times at the top. So what I can just do now is safely 
say this is my fin. For the shark I could just stretch and just make it work and this is what the fin will look like at the end. So let's move along to the next part of this chapter and it's the tail that is next. Okay, we're almost there. We gotta give him a tail yet. So let's work on the tail together and let's move on to chapter number 10. So welcome to the next chapter. We're gonna finally do the tail. So the tail is one of the ones I was looking forward to the most and of course it's the last thing to do because the designer was moving from the front to the back. The tail consists of two of these triangle shapes here in order to be put together. So once we get one done we do another, we sew it together and then we trace it with some single crochet round to give this the shape that you're going to need. Now this is a kind of an unusual one here because this is not the same shape as the shark fin. Okay, so we have that up here. This is slightly different. So what's gonna happen on here is that when we go to start it, let me turn these the way that I would have started it here and this one would be here. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way I, I look at it. Okay, I'll just do it like that. Actually I'll do it like that because that's what it looks like in the pattern. So what we have here is that we're going to just strategically grow this out but you can see it doesn't have the massive taper like this because not every row do we add two single crochets in the end. We have to strategically start and then there's a repeat pattern and I'm gonna show you a diagram. Once we get to a certain amount there's about 29 rows I believe on this one is that we're going to start tapering on this side here and this is the middle of the shark and the back end and so when we apply this you can see that it has the indentation of the back of the fin just like this, just the back of the tail. So let's uh, begin and let me show you a diagram and then we'll begin from that point. So I'm showing my diagram here and what's gonna happen, we're gonna start up and these numbers on these sides represent the rows. So there's 29 rows going all the way and their space here means nothing. It just, I was trying to respace myself because my writing was getting out of control. So what we have here is that we have a repeat patterning going on and in the first one to eight rows, we're always increasing on the final stitch. Okay, so from about here to here. So the very final on this side will have always two single crochets in there um, to keep that balance. Once we get to row number nine, uh, what's gonna happen is that every other row, one row will be just strictly single crochet and the other one will just strictly be a single crochet two times in the one side only. So you'll have your flat edge like you see here and then this side will continue to grow. Now because it's every other row, this taper is not as severe as the top of the, of the fin of the ship or of the of the ship I'm thinking of uh, Carnival um, but, but <laughs> the fin of the shark and I was thinking to my point of view is that this is how you get this nice shape without actually um, worrying about it too much. So what's gonna happen is that we need to repeat the rows of nine and ten over and over and over and over until you get to row number 26 and then in, after row 26 I put a line there and we're going to decrease then three rows in a row on one side to give you this kind of edge right here. So what's gonna happen here is that we're gonna start off and I'm going to get you to a certain point and then I'm gonna tell you to repeat. You can take a screenshot of the of the, of the monitor right now if you would like to have this diagram. Um, it's just I did it for myself. Even if you get it wrong in some way as long as you lay both fins down and they match each other and then you sew them in the middle, I think you're gonna be okay. Uh, just make sure your fins not, or your tail feather, <laughs> your tail is not too, uh, is not too uh, small. So let's begin to do the next part of this tutorial. Let's grab your yarn and let's try this. So let's start doing the fin together and we're going to do a slip knot. Okay, we're going to start off by chaining two. Remember that does not count as a stitch or a chain. So we're gonna chain two, one and two. First chain from the hook, this is gonna be row number one, is going to put two single crochets in there. Okay, so that was second chain from the hook, sorry. If I didn't say that right. So there we go. So that's it, that's row number one and we're gonna just pull things a little tight and continue. Let's just turn our work and go for row number two. Row number two, we're going to establish what side is growing and what side is gonna stay flat. So we're gonna just chain up one and it, this side is gonna stay flat so it's gonna be one single crochet only. The next side is gonna have two single crochets. So the expansion is going to happen on this side of the project here. Let's turn our work and go for number three. In number three,
In number three we're gonna chain up one and the expansion is still gonna happen on this side of the fin or this side of the tail and you're going to apply two single crochets into that first one and then one into each of the remaining ones. So this side where I'm heading to now is gonna stay flat right here. Let's turn our work and go for row number four. So row number four we're going to chain up one, one single crochet in the first one to keep this edge flat and then one single crochet into each until the very final of where you're going to put two single crochets into the final. One and two. Okay, that was row number four. Turn and work, let's go for row number five. I'm just checking this off as I go. Row number five, this is the expansion side, so we're gonna chain up one and apply two single crochets into the final, or into the first one and then one into each one of the next ones. So this is row number five. Just like that. Turn and work, let's do number six. So number six we're starting on the side that's considered flat. This is the expansion side here. So we're going to chain up one just like that and then just one single crochet in each across until the final. Where there's going to be two single crochets into the final. Just like that. Okay, so that was number six. Let's turn our work, do number seven. So number seven we're gonna still expand on this side. So chain up one, one single crochet, sorry two into the first one. I apologize for that. We're still expanding and then one single crochet into each. So that was row number seven. We're finally approaching row number eight before the story is gonna change on this thing. So we're just getting ourselves started and then we're gonna have the triangle shape relax itself a little bit. Okay, let's turn our work and go for number eight. So just chain up one and one single crochet right into the end except for the last one it's gonna have two. So then the storyline is gonna change now. We're gonna start from row number nine and ten and that's gonna be the repeat pattern for several rows uh, until we get to what we need to do. Okay, so the very final here is going to have two single crochets right in the end. So let's begin and if you look at the other one that we started with is like you can see it matches each other just like that. So let's move along and let's try rows number nine and ten. So I need you to repeat what you're about to see seven more times after you do this first and uh, you do it first time. So we're going to start up first and row number nine is just chain up one and one single crochet into each. So one I don't even have to count it. So your goal is to look and make sure that you get all the way to 18. So you're just expanding slowly when you go to do that. So this is row number nine. Just strictly one single crochet all the way across. Turn and work, let's do row number 10. So row number 10 we are going to expand on this side only. Okay, so let's just chain up one and we start off with just one single crochet into each except for the very final. So the easiest way to remember this is every time you head back towards this side of the work where it's expanding you're always gonna apply two extra, or you're always gonna apply two single crochets into the final stitch. It's an easy way to remember that and then what I would continue to do if it were me is that I would kind of eye it up and then once you get your 18 you know you can stop. So the very final stitch is gonna be two single crochets. So you just have to repeat the last two rounds or rows uh, seven more times. So I'm just gonna do it one with you again. So let's go back to row number nine, chain up one, one single crochet into each. So I'm just repeating this just to show you. So one single crochet into each. And then once you get that done turn your work chain up one, one single crochet into each except for the final. This is repeating of row number 10 and the final is gonna have two single crochets and you can tell it's going back to the area that is jutting out. So if you remember that you know to do it. So what I want you to do is I want you to repeat that till you do get up to row 26 or to 18 stitches 
um, just in case you don't get it right. <laughs> uh, I think it's gonna be row 26, I'm pretty sure of it. So the very final one is gonna be two single crochets. So I've just repeated that with you now. Now you just need to repeat six more times from this point and then I'll meet you at the top where I'll show you how to do the decrease for the nice shaping. So let's start the decreasing of the tail. So I got my stitches I need here and I need to jet it in and it's just like the original sample. I need to jet it in just a little bit just to give it shaping right at the, ba the base. So what we have to do here is that we have to watch where this, the jetting in happens on the flat side, okay? So when we look at it, it's gonna happen over here. So we're gonna start off this row which is the next row starting uh, after you have all the repeats done. You're just gonna chain up one and one single crochet into each except for the very final two is that we're going to do two together. Okay, so we're gonna do a decrease to get rid of some stitches out in order to create that shape. Okay, so the very final two stitches go in, pull through, go in, pull through, to the next one and pull through together and that just becomes one. So that's one of three that you have to do. So the next one we're gonna start up and we're gonna jet in even more. So we're gonna chain up one, the very first stitch, pull through, the very next stitch, pull through and those are gonna be two together. So that's gonna jet it in even more and then one single crochet into each across. So when we come back we're going to turn around and just do one more row and that's it for the tail and then we're gonna start doing some assembly uh, putting the tail together, the two pieces, and then we're gonna do some tracing with uh, single crochet in order to really give it a nice look. And uh, the tail has been something I've been looking forward to the whole tutorial. I have been crocheting this real time in behind all of the, the filming. I have to say that I started two nights ago and I'm almost done. So this project hasn't really taken me that long which I'm really quite surprised with. So chain up one and just one single crochet into each so you notice we never expanded this time around on this side. And on the other side what we have to do is that we have to decrease by two stitches. Okay, the final two stitches are gonna be coming up next. So that one there it is, that's all there. So this stitch plus the next one, this is the final, are gonna come together. So that's it. So you're done this side of the tail, the other side of the tail's done. Leave an extra long tail on here because you're gonna wanna sew together things. Just pull through. And now you need to do two of these. So go and do another one and then when we come back what we're going to do then is that we're going to apply the two tails together and we're gonna put them together with a, a whip stitch across and this will be what the tail looks like then and then we're gonna trace it then with single crochet in order to refine the edges. So let's move along and do um, the whip stitching next. Okay the first thing I wanna do is that I left two extra long strands here, one on each side cause you know I did. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of one of them. I only need one of these strands in order to do it. So all, all I'm just gonna do is that I'm gonna take that one strand and just weave it in and out of the of the section here and we're gonna catch out of that when we go to sew it together anyway. So you only need one strand in order to whip stitch these together. Just you never know when you're working on these things what you need so you just you know for an extra couple feet of yarn no big deal. So I'm just gonna do that and then I'm just gonna pull and get rid of that out so that's out of my way. So now I'm going to put these together. So you gotta make sure that this flat, this edge here is going to be toward the head of the body Okay, it looks like it's relatively flat here. The tail will attach here and then what's gonna happen, this indentation is toward the back of, of the shark. So what you're gonna do now is just grab your other yarn strand that was on there and you're going to whip stitch these together. Okay, so let's do some whip stitching. So just put it onto a needle and just go straight across from each other. There should be the same amount of stitches that are available to you so just match what you see. So just going right straight across, just jump it over and pull. So then just jump over and pull. And jump over 
it doesn't matter like you can go this way if you prefer but I just happen to do that way which is kind of unusual for me to do it in that direction. But if you just whip stitch these together just matching stitch to stitch you will end up with the right amount of stitches at the end. If you're off by one just happen to be um, don't worry about it too much just kind of you know use your needle and some fancy footwork and do what you need to do in order to get it. Never try to frog as much as people try to. I think with this particular project I think you, because it's such fluffy yarn you can get away with a lot of probably imperfections without you even noticing it at the end if you forget about it. So just continue to whip stitch all the way across and I'll show you how to finish this off. So I'm coming up near to the end of the whip stitching of the two panels to come together. They're matching. And I wanna get rid of this yarn strand altogether when I'm done. Okay, so I don't need it anymore so just whip. So I'm gonna go around that same one one more time and this time I'm just gonna feed it through a loop kind of locks that in a position. And then what I want to do with the strand is that I just want to glide it in underneath some fibers. Just go right into the fibers. A nice sharp needle does the does wonders pulling it through. And just make sure that you don't make it contract too much. And then go back in the other direction through a different path. Okay, so there's my third time going through and now that it's in and out three times it'll never fall out of my work. Okay, just pull things before you trim and then I can trim right there and I'm going to be ready then to trace the whole tail that's now complete all the way around and let's do that next. So let's begin to trace the tail. If you noticed in the photograph it, the tail actually looks really finished. You'll see it has a beautiful edging. It's got a single crochet all the way around. The ones on the edge points here have five single crochets in. The rest of it is just all one single crochet. So when you're looking at it from this point of view it's just all one single crochet except for the edge. It's gonna be five and the edge is gonna be five. I'm gonna start in the middle. It doesn't say where to start. I think it doesn't really matter too much just as long as you get your five in the end. So let's begin to do that. So let's attach and just creating another slip knot and I'm just gonna go right in the middle here and I'm just gonna apply one single crochet. Now you were doing single crochet rows so every row equals a single crochet. Okay that's the advantage about single crochet. So just attach, chain one, one single crochet in to the same spot and then you're ready to go. Leave the straggler down on top. So just go in the ends of a row and every row equals one single crochet in the rules of crochet. Use your fingertips to kind of feel where the holes are so I can kind of feel and just going in trapping that straggler into position as you go and you can do a nice traced border using single crochet all the way around. So continue just to do one single crochet all the way around. On the tips of the tail make sure there's five. Follow it all the way back up. Go all the way around to the other side here. Put five here. Come around and finish. So do one single crochet in each all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. I've done my tips just like you see here. Uh, you can see both sides and then I'm just going to finish off in the be in the beginning and I'm just going to do a slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that I wanted or that I started with and that's it. So what I'm just gonna do because this is the very end of the project and nothing else will go over top of this. I am going to take a darning needle and I am going to hide that into position that final one. So there's certain things on the projects that you have to be conscientious of that. Are you doing any more with it? If not then you really gotta take an effort to do it. Like if you just weave it in you know that's gonna fall out. You know you get a kid uh, jumping in and out of this thing. So you want to take care of those little details that just make it life a lot easier. So just going in and out underneath the stitches. If you go in and out three times you can pretty well guarantee it will never fall out. So one going in a different path for two and different path for three. So just in and out three times and now we are now ready to begin to assemble the eyes and the fins to your project. Okay, let's go like that and hopefully you, you can take care of any uh, tip ends that you had. I buried it as I went with mine so I know that that's good. I can cut those out and I can do that on both sides. So now the tail is now ready for assembly and right where it's at the top here. This is where it's going to attach. This is the back end of the of the shark and now it's all about whip stitching things to be, be able to put it together. So let's uh, begin to do that process next. 
It's my favorite time. It's assembly time. Yes, we are almost done. Let's put our shark together and give him some life. So we're now at that part of the tutorial. You are going to have your eyes, the whites done. You're going to have the center of the eyes itself, okay, the pupils. You will have the shark fin done. You will have your tail all completely ready and assembled and ready to go. And then you will have your body. So what we're going to do then is that we're going to look at the photograph. So I've showed you how to whip stitch in this video several times. So what you want to do is just match this photograph to what you need to do. So obviously the tail is going to go to the tail. You were just going to match everything. Keep this in line. Know what is up and what's down. For myself I left in my stitch marker to tell me which is the back side. So when I'm going to look at it here I'm going to turn it around. There's those teeth and I'm just going to fold it back. So I'm just going to look. Let's say let's do the eyes. So the eyes I'm going to sew the black to the white. So I left on an extra tail and then use this white then to go and I'm going to use it. Now do you notice that the eyes here look like they're oval shaped even though they were circles in the pattern? That's because when they were sewn the person that did it did it more of an oval shape and just sewed it together like that. That's personally that's up to you the way that you want to handle that. So looking at it here you can see the kind of looking at where the teeth were. You can see that one eye was kind of right about there. Okay, and the pupils will be on top of it like so. If you want to shift them and make them look cuter, bring them more closer in, that's completely up to you. Again, this is your creativity then lighting on fire. So you can have two eyes there obviously. Like so, if you want to leave them in the center you can. If you would prefer down. It makes a, a huge difference on the cuteness. Once you get that done, if you want to do the eyes first, you just leave your eyes and they're just circled down. So where is the fin? So if you look at the line in the pattern you'll see that this is kind of where the jaw started. So I can go one, two, three. I'm counting the rows. So I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what I want to do is go right down in the center and let's see where the fin is gonna go. So just count back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that's where the fin goes. Now if you're not happy with where the fin's going and you want to change the direction make sure that this is the front of the shark. It's going to be staying flat. If you want to move it and move it further back that's kind of up to you. And then you're going to work to the end of your project and you're going to do it. So what I would recommend for this is that because I'm a little kind of anal with this stuff is that I would actually measure what is the middle of the shark. Okay so 17 inches. Okay, so I would measure right in the middle, 17. Okay, so they're right about there. Okay, and then I would see that this is about yay long. So then I would measure back and what I would do is put in stitch markers from that point. So 16, so it's eight and a half. So I would just put in a stitch marker at the eight and a half mark right here and that will indicate to me where that is. And then what I would do is like I'm just putting it underneath and then measuring further back. Okay, again right in the center and another stitch marker at the eight and a half. And again just look at it. See does it make sense? And if you have to adjust you have to adjust. There you go right about there. So pull it away. Does it make sense? And get your fin back. If it was there would it make sense? Okay, so that's something that you have to do for yourself and to put things together just whip stitch everything together. So just uh, using the long strand here just go in a straight line. If you need to put down a line for example a longer line than what you have. So just use your strands. Okay, so if you're gonna say from here I'm just talking out loud here. I'm just giving you ideas. So I would go like here and just put it here underneath and therefore you've got a straight line that's going in. So if you keep to that straight line as you whip stitch in you're going to have it so it matches. Again that's completely up to you on how you want to execute that as well.
Your shark is now done. You've mastered making your own fantastic sleep and snuggle sack. Congratulations to you. Now, on behalf of my friends at yarninspirations.com, as well as myself, Mikey of the Crochet Crowd.com, thank you so much for joining me today. And we're going to have more sleep sacks available to you. Just stay tuned to this YouTube channel. And of course, whenever we have free patterns, you can obviously count on our channel to be part of it. Until next time, have a great day. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.